everybody. Hey, thanks for jumping in. My goal for this video is to walk you through setting up a nonlinear simulation using Alter SimLab. So I have my mesh model here of a flex plate that's connected to a crank, and this basically connects an engine to the torque converter for an automatic car. So for this exercise, I am going to include a bolt in this hole so that we can include a pretension load for the simulation. So under the advanced tab and bolt geometry options, look under the 3D menu and you'll find the create bolt. Then you'll get a menu that helps you define what that bolt's gonna look like once you wanna put that in your assembly. So I'll just choose the faces for the washer and the threads here, and then we'll hit okay. So you can see the bolt is created as a separate model over here in the browser. I'll just highlight both of those and merge the models. Okay, I do have a different type of steel I wanna use for the flex plate, so I'm gonna create a new material here. And for the flex plate, I'm just gonna call it flex plate steel and just change a few of the properties. But then for the bolt and the crank, I'm just gonna use steel. So now that my material is created, I'm gonna come down to properties. I'm gonna assign those to each individual part. So that flex plate will get the flex plate steel. Then I'll go through, find the bolt, assign the uh, standard steel, and then the same thing to the crank. You'll see all three of those properties show up on the left-hand side in the property browser. To set up the solution, just right click in the browser and hit create solution. You can see from here the different solver options. Again, this works inside of your existing workflow, so if you have a different solver, you can use that here. Now I want this one to be a nonlinear static test, and then I'll just choose the three parts of my assembly. Okay, now I do want to create contacts between the different parts of my assembly. Now, SimLab makes this really easy. It gives you the option to make automatic contacts. If you click all bodies, it would go through to scan it and create these contacts for you. For this purpose, I am going to show you how to do it manually just so you can see the steps. So the first contact I want to create is between this bolt and the flex plate itself. I'll go through, now the one thing is I do want to change the face type because these are planar uh, faces. So I'm going to change that here. And I'm going to leave the uh, type as to use the contact parameters. For the second contact, I want to go between the crank and the flex plate. This will have a few different faces that I have to worry about. So I'm just going to choose all when I'm doing that, but I still want to use the contact parameters uh, for the type. Then for this last contact, I am going to do uh, between the bolt and the crank itself. And because this is going to be a cylindrical face, I'll change that face type to the cylindrical. And I'm going to choose a freeze contact here so it enforces the motion between surfaces. Once your contacts are created, you have the options to right click the contacts and open up the review. And then you can get a quick snapshot of all the different contacts that have been created and make sure they look right before you move forward. Okay, next step is to create a load case. So if I right click on the solution, I can use define using a load case. Now I am going to do uh, this first one as the pretension load. So I'm going to rename it just so it makes it way easier as I'm setting things up in the future. Now to actually add the load is pretty simple. I'll come up to the advanced tab, choose bolt modeling, and then find the bolt pretension option. From here, it's just basically choosing the bolt and then the load that wants to be applied. Okay, so for the pretension load, I do need to create a few constraints. So if I come up to the constraints icon and choose fixed, for the pretension load, I want every angle to be covered. And then I'll choose this rectangle here in order for it to be my constraint. And then I am gonna add a second one and I'm just gonna pull off everything else and just do the sides. Uh, that way I know it's kind of held in place there. Okay, so that's it for the pretension load. I'm gonna add a second load case here and I'm gonna call it the enforced displacement load. Then I'm gonna take the two constraints that I created already in the pretension load and just copy those over to this load as well. Okay, now I'm gonna actually create another constraint and I'm gonna put it on the bottom. This one's gonna be fixed as well. And I'm just gonna choose the Z axis uh, for displacement here. Okay, so for my last constraint, I'm going to choose an enforced constraint. I'm going to do it again on the z-axis and make it a negative 0.5 to give it some direction. So again, for every analysis you're going to do, you're going to use your own parameters. I'm just going to make a few quick changes to the parameters on mine. I'm going through and just changing the number of intervals and the number of sub-increments and then looking at the different solver for displacement on the different loads. 
And one thing I really love about SimLab is just how intuitive it is. If you need to find something it's really easy to find, it's really straightforward and how you're gonna set things up, it really does make it really easy to use when you're setting up some complex analysis. So I'm gonna make one last change to the solver settings here. I'm just gonna have it not check the element quality and that's just to reduce the, the computational power needed. So I just don't want that to be something that's slowing it down. Okay, and that's it, I've set everything up. The only thing left to do is just run the analysis. And SimLab also makes it really clean to understand kind of what you're looking at when you get a finished result. You can quickly make animations, you can bounce between von Mises stress and the different strains and max strains and different options like that. You can quickly see from different angles. And one thing I actually think that's pretty interesting is if there's some part of your assembly that you need to get a little deeper into and you need to see what's happening behind you know, a wall, it's pretty easy to do that just by hiding that wall and then you can run that same animation and be able to see what's happening behind that. So hopefully this video has kind of helped you see Altair SimLab and the interface and how easy it really is to use. I think SimLab is that perfect blend between the ease of use of CAD but adding that advanced capability that you see in a lot of the CAE tools. If you want to learn more about SimLab or just have any questions in general, reach out to us at trueinsight.io. Thanks.